Hey, I'm Marty Dodson. And I'm Clay Mills. Welcome to Songtown on Songwriting. Hey, everybody. It's Marty Dodson. I'm here with Clay Mills. And today we are going to be talking about how to waste your entire songwriting budget. <laughs> Just to blow it, flush it down the toilet. Um, but Marty, I like spending money on songwriting that I don't need to spend. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the one for you. Um, so the first one, I think the most costly thing I did in the beginning was demoing bad songs. And last episode, we talked about some of the worst advice you've been given. Somebody actually told me one time, well, every song you write deserves a demo. And I look back at my catalog and go, no, they don't. Cause some of them are really <laughs> stinkers. Some of them are never going to go anywhere. And just because I loved it in the moment does not mean it deserves a demo. So I wasted tens of thousands of dollars demoing songs that never got cut. Literally zero songs ever got recorded that I had coming into my first publishing deal. And I paid for demos on all, you know, tons of these songs. None of them ever got recorded. So I kind of threw away all that money. Yeah. And, you know, when you look at, I did the same thing, you know, and fortunately I had a, some home recording equipment. So I was able to put my own vocals down, but at the time, I mean, I was paying musicians to record tracks, drummers and guitar players and spent a fortune on my first publishing deal. And I mean, I'm trying to think back to some of those years early on, spending tens of thousands of dollars on demos, songs that never went anywhere. Thankfully, you know, there was a publisher involved that helped me out with those costs, but he's not calling me right now, thankful that he spent that money. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and then to kick it off, the first big cut I ever got was something I just recorded on my iPhone with with a guitar and singing you know, because it was a great song, you know, it, it didn't yeah. need a fancy production to make it sound good. And I think that's where we have to, we have to realize, okay, is this a good enough song to actually put the money into it? Because, you know, you do, if it's an up-tempo song, if it's a, you know, a feel good song, yeah, maybe you need a full production. If it's a ballad, maybe you can get away with a piano vocal or a guitar vocal. So you have to kind of, learn those things but man i wish i had that money back that yeah i spent on bad songs and you know not necessarily bad songs but just average songs good songs yeah yeah you know but they weren't they weren't special enough to warrant spending the money and they weren't special enough to get cut by a major artist you know yeah and i think too like when i got that first deal it was like oh my publisher's paying for my demos let's just demo anything that's i think is even close and i realized at some point hey i've got to pay him back for part of that you know yeah so I, i'm blowing through money that is going to come out of my money when when the royalties start coming in so i think just being really careful about where you demo songs uh i mean when you demo them uh is crucial and can save you so much money uh, that you can spend on other things that are going to actually help you progress your songwriting career or get better as a songwriter. Um, another one is pay to pitch opportunities. Uh, again, I did some of those in the beginning, literally never had a, a cut from those. I don't know anyone who's ever had a cut from those opportunities since then I've discovered that a lot of those things are kind of shady and they take, they, they take your money to pitch to an artist that writes all their own material and things like that, where you, they know you have no chance. And so I wasted a good amount of money on pay to pitch opportunities in the beginning. Clay, did you do any of that? I never did any of that, but I know just from, from Songtown members, they'll hit me up and go, Hey, there, this, you know, opportunity came up and, this person that I paid 25 bucks to is telling me this song is perfect. They're going to send this song over to this artist. And I'm like, well, I've written hits with that artist. They're not going to listen. I know their team. They're not going to listen to anything coming in. So you've just wasted basically 25 bucks. So I think you really have to do your homework. 
And it's easy to tell if you look at an artist album and you see, oh, they've co-written everything on that project, then don't pay to somebody to pitch a song to them. Right. Spend your time yeah. focused on artists that do cut outside songs. Try to find, and this is one thing we would do with our edge groups, is we hook you up with publishers who actually are pitching to artists that if you write a killer song, they can get the song to, to that team for that artist rather than us trying to throw together a pitch to publisher. I mean, I'm not saying they're all bad, but just know this, the real music business doesn't operate on pitch to publisher events. That's not, that's like outside the real music business. Mm -hmm. So just know that if, you know, a famous artist, say Keith Urban, who occasionally cuts outside material he doesn't even know about this event that, you know, he, he doesn't know, probably know the people doing it. He probably, you know, so just know that um, there it's outside the peripheral of the real music business. Yeah. And you want to try to build your connections with real publishers. Um, for instance, Elizabeth brand, um, she has sign writers at her publishing company. Um, they, pitch songs daily to sync possibilities. They pitch songs to artists. Um, I just, a friend of mine writes for them, uh, Mark Irwin. He just got a song on a TV show, um, Yellowstone, that was pitched. Elizabeth, you know, um, has sync connections. So th that's the way the business works, you know. And so that's why when we, we bring someone like Elizabeth into to our edge groups, She's letting you know, OK, I can get a song to Tim McGraw. I know the people to do that. So this month, let's all try to write a song perfect for Tim McGraw. If you nail that, then you got a shot at actually getting it to Tim McGraw. But if you go on the majority of pitch sites, you know, one, we know, Marty, it's run by someone in another state that's not even part of the country music scene. And they charge a lot of money for pitching and that's that's they're not going to be able to get a song to tim mcgraw they just don't have the connections to do that yeah yep and Absolutely. we'll catch flack yeah. somebody's gonna holler at us for saying this and by all means there are legitimate people out there so i'm not discounting everyone but just do your homework because yeah. there are a lot of people that aren't the real deal um you go to their website there's no name on the website they, they don't want to take responsibility for and put their face on there. You know, just do your homework, please, because you're going to yeah. spend a lot of money. And we have yeah. members, you know, we have members that this publisher said he's going to get my song to so and so. I just had to give him twenty five hundred dollars to redemo the song, you know, and then, yeah. well, you're paying for their production company. You're not. Yeah. You know, it's it's just sad. Absolutely. Another place I have wasted a lot of my songwriting money is buying gear that I will probably never master. <laughs> and so Clay is like a, a studio junkie. He knows how to use all that stuff and he is good at it. So when he buys gear, he's buying gear that's going to up the quality of his productions and he knows how to use it. I do not. I'm, I'm primarily a lyricist. And so I've spent all this money on gear um, that I rarely use. And most of it uh, is just sitting in boxes that I literally never use because I, I didn't take the time to learn it. And even if I had, it wasn't going to make me a better lyricist or better songwriter. You know, so I think it's really important if you got a certain finite amount of songwriting dollars, don't go buying a bunch of gear to try to be like somebody else. You know, I was I was thinking maybe I could learn to, to do demos like somebody like clay and that's just not going to be me, you know? So I try to now spend my money on things that are going to make me better with my skill set instead of trying to be like somebody else. Well, how Marty, how do you know? Because that's tough. I know people, they're like, well, I'm going to learn to be a better producer at home and I'm going to spend this year just doing that. How do you know if you're wasting your time at it or you're like, because I imagine for a lot of people, if you don't know, if you don't have an accurate picture of what your skills are, how would you how would you go about figuring that out? 
Well, for example, I've been playing guitar for 45 years and I'm still a very basic guitar player. So I'm not going to be realistically, I go, okay, I'm not going to be doing a recording and doing a great guitar track. That's just not going to happen. You know, right. maybe if I got a guitar teacher and I spent the next five years, but you know, kind of, kind of the way I put it to people in Songtown is if you're over 40 and you're not able to do songwriting full time, you probably don't have time to learn, you know, to really dive in and learn a production or learn to be the best guitar player, you know, good enough guitar player to do your own demos. And so you really have to budget your time as well as your money and go, okay, I'm, you know, 50 years old. I've got a family st still at home. I've got these, a job. So I'm not going to be able to do everything. And yeah, so you or if you're 20 years old and, you know, your singing is not your strong point. So you team up with, you know, somebody that can do a track, somebody that can sing, whatever you can't do, because, yeah. you know, you don't have time. If you're going to be a professional, at some point you have to figure out what is my superpower. And we have to focus on becoming great at that. So other professionals come to you for that, you right. know? So if you feel like, well, Lyrics, my strong point, but man, if I just knew how to play more guitar chords, you know, if I spend six months learning some new guitar chords, that's going to do it for me. No, that's not going to do it for yeah. you. Your superpower is writing lyrics. Spend six months becoming a kick ass lyric writer. Then you have a shot because when you're in a professional situation, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road. You sit in a room with other professionals and everybody knows instantly, um, you know, what your skill set is. It becomes apparent, you know, in, in the room. So I, I think that, that at some point we have to just kind of be honest with ourselves and go, OK, what this is what I'm good at. Let me really focus in and get better at that and, and stop wasting time trying to you No, know, it's just not time is money. So, yeah. I mean, I, I've got one person in Songtown who's talented that every couple of days he's sending me a new ad for a plug in. He's like, check out this plug in. I just got he's yet to ever send me a song or post a song or <laughs> where he's actually using these plugins. But he gets wow. very excited about buying them. That's mm -hmm. when I think, OK, if you really want to be a songwriter, you've got to be spending 90 percent of your time writing songs and then yeah. maybe if you enjoy plugins maybe five percent of your time playing around with some plugins yeah yeah i've got a friend mark nestler who is an unbelievable guitar player and a great singer and so he decided during covid he said okay if i'm going to be stuck at my house i'm going to learn production because if i can do production and sing and play guitar i can do really great recordings and so he identified the one skill that he didn't have that he thought could kind of level up what he does. And he worked on that and focused on that for a year and he got really good at it. He didn't stop doing the other things. He just used right. his extra time to, to work on learning and, and getting better as a producer. And now he's kind of a, you know, a secret weapon because he's got all these skills that can do, you know, really great recording all by himself. Yeah. And he was already, he had already spent decades becoming a world-class songwriter and singer. I mean, right. So if he wants to take a little time to develop some other things by that point, okay. You know, because he's already got these superpowers that he can rely on. If he yeah. was just starting out and, he hadn't had any success as a writer and he's going, well, you know what, I'm going to take a year or two to learn to build tracks. Then man, what are you ever going to write a, a great song? I mean, it's like, you yeah. Know. Yeah. So, you know, he kind of did that out of necessity and, and he was forced to, to stay at home a lot more and he wasn't able to go to studios. And so he thought, okay, this makes sense for me. In my case, it didn't make sense for me to, to do that particular thing. So I worked on some other skill sets during COVID and and took advantage of that time in an other way. Um, and then the last one I was going to talk about was paying 
non-qualified gurus to um, mentor me. And I haven't done a lot of that, but I, I did early in my career. I paid for some things. And then I got there and I thought, I'm not sure these people have really even done what I'm trying to do, you know? <laughs> and so you and I both see lots of people that are just spending those songwriting dollars, you know, every shiny little thing, you know, get your song in front of blah, 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 or, you know, learn how to do guitar tracks for TV or whatever it might be. And um, they're jumping on all these things instead of, taking a second, like we've been talking about to go, okay, what's really going to help me level up? And do these people, have they really done what I'm trying to do? You know, can I trust that they know enough to really help me level up? So I think that's a big one. Yeah. I mean, I know from my own personal experience, I went to a famous music school and, you know, studied some songwriting and, when I got into the real world, honestly, I, I had to unlearn a lot of the stuff that I was told was important because in the real world, when I got in the room with Hall of Fame songwriters, when I got in the room with producers that were producing hits, with artists that were unbelievably gifted at singing a lyric and interpreting a lyric, when I got in the room with these people, most of the stuff that I had been told was important really wasn't important. Yeah. And it sounded good. Like you might see somebody that's a songwriting guru on Instagram and they put up these flashy little shorts and they, I'm not talking about under shorts. I'm talking about <laughs> short videos. Um, maybe that gave me an idea. Okay. Anyway. So you see these things and you go, this person's got, how many followers and they've never had any success as a songwriter and what they're telling me, I know from, from personal experience that it's really not going to matter that much in the writing room. So I, be careful that you separate. Once again, do your homework. If it's somebody that has walked the walk that knows what they're talking about, then see if the, the advice rings true. But man, I see so many people that, try they they maybe tried to make it as a writer or a producer and couldn't so now they're like built this whole empire on telling other people how to do something man i i would just walk on past it and go to the source you know we could have done we were talking about some of the best advice anyone ever gave me this was in one of our other podcasts but man i i would just say the best advice probably anyone gave me is if you want to learn to do something, go learn it from someone doing it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk for just a second about where do we recommend that you do spend your songwriting budget? Um, I would say if, if there's some way you can learn from someone that has walked the walk, that knows what they're talking about, that has a track record, then yeah. I mean, any of that, I mean, I've, I've taken, don't, don't tell anybody, Marty. I've taken some classes myself from people that I've admired. One of the Hall of Fame, the first Hall of Fame songwriter I ever got in a room with, he showed up five minutes late to the writing session apologizing because he had been in a songwriting class. And I'm like, you're teaching? And he goes, no, I'm taking it. And I, I was like, why? And he goes, because I really like the teacher. And I figured if I learned one thing in the class, then it was worth it. And so, but it was somebody that was teaching that it had some success. And so I think definitely that um, just, just make sure you're focused on people. But yeah, I mean, I've occasionally taken courses and often, even though I might take a course and sign up for something and go, oh yeah, this is, um, you know, if writers had a bunch of hits. Even so, because you and I've been in so many pro writer rooms, I'm going, yeah, well, I've seen this every day for the last 20 years, but it still kind of helped reinforce it. You know, it was like mm -hmm. good to see it again from from another perspective, kind of. But, yeah, yeah, I would say spend your money with people that can walk the walk. Yeah. And, you know, make sure that you're doing things that help you level up. Yeah. 
you know, not things that make flashy promises. It's, you know, it, and that starts with being really honest with yourself about what your skill set is and what you can be world class at and what you're just going to be decent or good at. You know, so I'm never going to be a world class guitar player. I let that go and I work on trying to become a world class lyricist. So I'm, I do things that help me get better in that that area, whether it's. Yeah, flat. you know, we have a, a buddy, Daniel Ross, who filmed great producer, filmed one of the courses on Songtown's website. And when he came in to film, he was telling me he was taking guitar lessons and he certainly plays good enough. I wouldn't think he needs to take guitar lessons, but he was taking vocal lessons, guitar lessons. Um, and he, those were those were skills that he uses every day at his job. And he wanted to get better at those. So if you are a track person, if that's your superpower and, you know, you go, OK, when the, I'm doing these tracks, if I could just get a little bit better on guitar, it would really help. OK, take take guitar lessons from somebody great that can teach you how to do that. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, that that's spending money. And, and Daniel was great. And, you know, once again, it's like even pros, Tiger Woods, as good a golf player as he was, he always had a swing coach. That, that could, you know, tweak and tweak and tweak and get better. And that he could blame if he didn't do well. But I don't think he ever had a songwriting coach because that no. was not going to help his golf. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, yeah, just be sure you're spending your money on things that are going to help you level up. You're not wasting it on gear you're not going to use or demoing songs that are just decent. And, you know, if you really focus in on what you're trying to do and who you are, that's going to help you spend your money wisely. So check out our show notes to learn about Songtown, to learn about books we've written, uh, to learn about our sponsor, Sweetwater Gear. Awesome company, has everything in the world you could imagine in regard to instruments, recording gear, microphones, monitors, all that stuff. And we appreciate their sponsorship. We will see you next time.